Welcome to another edition of James Martell's Coffee Talk, where James, successful publisher, speaker, and author of Online Success for Non-Techies, talks frankly and openly with experts from within the internet marketing industry about strategies and techniques you can use to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand. Here is your host, James Martell. Hi, it's James Martell here, and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk. Tonight, we're going to be talking about outsourcing, which is by far one of my favorite topics, primarily because it has allowed me to uh, build a substantial business, and probably, uh, I think what you're going to find is if you follow along this evening as we go through this, you're going to see that uh, you can fast track your businesses quite dramatically by employing the talents of others to uh, really boost the speed at which you're building your businesses. Tonight we're going to talk about why you should outsource, what you should outsource, and probably we'll get into a lot of detail on exactly how you should outsource. To date I've put through over a hundred projects alone into Elance. And that doesn't count get a coder or rent coder or any of the other services that I use as well. So I've had a good opportunity over the last couple of years to really dig into this whole area of outsourcing online. And it's something that uh, the more and more I do it, the uh, more exciting it gets and the faster I can build my business. It also has the ability to free up my time where in the past where I had to do so much of the work myself when I first got started that uh, that is no longer the case because I, I now have professionals literally all over the planet that I can draw upon to help me develop very uh, very uh, various parts of my business so it's really been an exciting time freelancing though or this whole area of outsourcing wasn't something that I began with early on obviously when I got started for those that may know a little bit about Arlene and I's story we didn't have a lot of money to uh, do anything of the such as far as hiring other people to get started so we did for the first couple of years literally do everything ourselves in fact it took me even a couple of years before I got Arlene interested in the whole area of affiliate marketing uh, so at, early on for the first couple of years I pretty much did everything myself so as our revenue and incomes began to increase though early on I realized that I needed to uh, get some help if I really wanted to push the business to the next level over the years, people have asked me, James, how in the world could you have built over 100 websites? How did you put together over well over 30,000 pages of content? And I think what they were thinking when they asked that question is, or they had a picture in their mind that I did all that myself, sitting in front of my little computer, just typing away like crazy. And the good news is I didn't do that. That wasn't at all what I did. And Early on, though, I built the first sites, and I really got a good understanding of what was needing to be done. However, once I, I had the basic fundamentals in place for me to then begin to uh, outsource to others, it was uh, pretty much a natural step. I also come from a general contracting business, so I have a little bit of a uh, flair for it because I've done it for years. So in the general contracting business, what you do is you, you're always hiring subtrades for various tasks that you need done around the job site. You don't have to know how to do everything uh, necessary to put a building together, whether it be air conditioning, whether it be flooring, whether it be the structural components of the business, whether it be cabinetry, or anything to do with the business or the project that's being developed. As long as you know how to hire the subtrades, it's uh, a relatively easy process because they're professionals, they know what they're doing, and you've got building inspectors and various inspectors that come in behind you just to double check, make sure the work is up to code, and away you go. So it's a little bit simpler in the building business. Online, early on, it wasn't like that though because there was no qualified subtrades. When I was in construction, if I needed a plumber, there's all kinds of plumbers in the in the phone book and available to you. Same with electricians and same with all the different subtrades that you could 
ever possibly need. There are already qualified people available to you. Early on in my affiliate marketing business, though, that wasn't the case. So when we started to, to look for professionals online, there really wasn't a lot of places that we could go. So we ended up early on outsourcing to local moms in the area because once we got to the point where we wanted to start creating lots of content for the net, I decided that we were going to hire some writers and essentially the way we did that was going to the local newspapers, placing small classified ads. They would call in. Arlene would interview them on the phone, my wife, and she would interview uh, these other moms who were looking for part-time income and we were looking for part-time writers and they would, uh, once we came to terms with them and agreed on a price per page, they would come over to our place, Arlene would load them up with the projects, and off they'd go. And it wasn't long before we had all kinds of people coming and going at home, bringing us content or emailing us content, and lots of interaction back and forth. And it was going very, very well. Then around 2004, I was invited to speak at Commission Junction University down in Santa Barbara, and I did a whole talk on making money with affiliate programs and one of the areas that I covered was this whole idea of employing the talents of others locally so that you can move your business ahead at a faster pace and interestingly enough I had a student in the audience in fact I had about 40 of them in the audience at that time and one of them came up to me afterwards and said and his name is Shlomo and he's, he's from New York and we've got to know him very good very well over the years and he attends most of the conferences, and we've done quite a bit of traveling through the conferences. Just a great guy, loves to play Texas Hold'em. Anytime we hit a local event, we uh, always sneak away one of the evenings to a local casino to play a little bit of cards. So that's always fun. But after my session, I have a room full of about 250 people listening to me talk. Shlomo comes walking up to me afterwards after hearing me explain that we're hiring local people and they're coming in from the newspaper. and we're, He says, I just use Elance. What's Elance? Well, Elance is a freelance service that where you can hire writers and all kinds of people on online. And I'm thinking, sounds good to me. Got home, investigated it, had a look at the website, signed up for, for a free account, completely changed our business, completely changed everything. So as we get into this whole discussion tonight on outsourcing, I'm hoping what you hear from me tonight is going to change your business to the level it changed mine. Because at the time, we had a small little office. We had, By that point, we had a, a couple of staff members coming in. We had a little bit of overhead to take care of the whole thing. We were paying workers' compensation and payroll and that type of thing to our, our little group of staff people. I think there was three of them at the time, maybe four. And when he came in and told me about Elance, I went home, dug right in, realized that this is exactly what I was looking for because I could now outsource to anyone in the world who was in the Elance system. So tonight we're going to talk a lot about Elance, how it can impact your business, whether you're just getting started, even if you don't have much of a budget or a budget at all, or if you've been around for a while and you may not have really grasped, grasped onto this area of hiring professionals to help you with your business. We're going to dig into this. I'm going to talk about my account. I'm going to take you through a number of the projects that I've done over the uh, last few years in Elance, and we're going to give you all the little details on how to deal with writers, some things to watch out for, some tips, how you can get the best deal, and uh, probably most importantly, how you can really, really use these services to uh, get your incomes up so we can obviously accomplish our goals and take care of the, uh, the things that we have in mind for our business. So I guess probably to begin, we should talk about why we should outsource. Essentially, one of the reasons that I like to get other people involved in developing my business is just because it allows me to build the business at a faster pace without me actually working harder. You know, I'm a guy that likes to travel a lot. Arlene and I do all kinds of trips. We're always on an airplane to somewhere thanks to the business. We pack our little laptop with us so we can do things while we're in Maui or where we're, while we're out in the boat. Right now we're probably going to be talking about a little cruise we're going to do next month in July when we're down 
in Miami attending the affiliate summit. And it's just that kind of thing is one of the reasons I like to outsource because while I'm away and while we're off doing things, it doesn't mean the business is stalled or stopped waiting for us to return. If we have some people at our fingertips who are there to help us, who can handle some content, develop some images, and do a number of the tasks that we need to have done in order to build our businesses, even while we're away, our businesses can be growing without us. And to me, the beautiful thing about the Internet is we have the, abil uh, the ability to build a business that works so we don't have to. So the last thing I wanted to do when I got into the affiliate marketing business was build myself a job that tied me to a desk for 8 to 10 to 12 to 15 hours a day. And I hear from affiliates from time to time that are working those kind of hours, and I'm thinking that is not the way to go about this. You are working way too hard and accomplishing way too little when you can employ the talents of some low-cost people who will be more than happy to take on some of the, the tasks that you are currently doing yourself. One of the reasons I love the Internet is because so much of it is automated. Once we get the websites up and running and we're ranking at the search engines, very little maintenance is needed to keep the income flowing. Obtaining your goals faster is another thing that I'm always trying to do. Yeah, and I figure if I can get some people on side who I can work with so I can begin to begin so I can begin to really push my business from the next from this level to the next level and there's always another level no matter where we're at there's always another level so we can start to automate some of these processes so those of you that are maybe looking at this from the area of developing extra income or maybe getting close to retirement and want to shore up the retirement income or maybe you're not quite happy with where you're at currently uh, and retirement is looming and you really want to get that income to a point where you can actually have a, a comfortable lifestyle Outsourcing can really, really help you to do that. One of the things that I do early on, and I'm, I'm always looking at this, and I'm always going through it, and I'd encourage you to do the same thing, is you should identify your roles within the business. Obviously, as we're putting these sites together, especially for those that are just getting started, you're going to be wearing many, many hats at any one time. Whether you're handling the writing, maybe you're putting the site together, you're doing the inbound linking, you're handling some graphics. There's a big learning curve for some people who are just getting started. Outsourcing has the ability not only to shorten the learning curve, but in a lot of cases to completely eliminate it. Just as I was a general contractor back in the old days, not having to know exactly how a plumber's job is done or what an electrician has to do or how to install a heating and ventila ventilation system, same thing goes online here. We don't need to know how to do everything. We don't need to become an expert in all these different areas because there are so many people out there that are available at our fingertips to help us with what we're doing that uh, I think you're going to be amazed for those who haven't actually done any outsourcing. Another thing that outsourcing can allow you to do if you happen to be one of these people that is very busy, maybe you're working a lot and you're working long hours into the evening in a job or you only have a certain number of hours in a day and you to actually focus on this business or maybe only one or two or only a few hours a week. If you get good at outsourcing, there's no reason that you cannot still build a business in a very quick period of time because they're going to be doing the work for you. If you were to only learn one thing in this entire business and that is how to outsource to other people, you realize you can still you can build a tremendous business without even touching your mouse to build an actual website in most cases. If you're somebody who maybe suffers a little bit from procrastination, and I know probably all of us suffer from that in certain areas of our lives. Nobody, I think, is immune to that. Outsourcing can really help you to solve that problem because typically the things we procrastinate around are the things that we don't like to do. So 
if you're finding yourself working in certain areas of the business and other areas are, are becoming mundane or tedious or you're just not getting to it, that's probably some areas that you may want to consider outsourcing. For those that are just getting started that may not currently have a budget, and it's amazing what you can do with $100 or $200 a month just to outsource, and it can usually turn that income around very quickly. But even if you are just getting started, and once your revenue starts, I would encourage you to quickly set a budget, invest some of your profits back into your copywriters, back into your freelance people who are helping you, because again, that can help you to really move ahead. Another advantage of outsourcing is you can really increase the professionalism of the work being done. Let's face it, if you're not a professional writer, you don't need to become one and we probably shouldn't try. If you've never handled graphics and you would prefer to outsource that to somebody else who already knows it, outsource your graphics. If you're a little bit nervous in the area of handling the technical details of the business. That's another great thing that you can outsource. Some of the areas of some of the portions of your business, some areas of everything that we're doing here can, with a little bit of thought, and we're going to talk about this tonight, can be put on autopilot where we can actually begin to even free up some time even when we're getting started so we're not doing all the work. For example, if we want to be adding an article a week to our website, there's no point in us being that overly involved in that. If we can outsource that to a professional writer at a very low cost, let them handle the research, let them handle the writing, let them handle the posting of the article on the website, let them do it all. And then you just know and, and can rest assured that every week that that little task is getting done. And every month your website is getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bit better and it's not taking any more of your time. Now of course in order to pull those types of things off we need to get prepared up front, we need to get things organized and get ready so that we can hire the writer and get them on a schedule of once a week or once a month or every other day, whatever it's going to be and that's the kind of stuff that we're going to cover in the next 30 minutes here. Same with this whole area of technical when it comes to hosting domain names, when it comes to running into a problem technically. How many of you have ever run into a place where you've, you're, you've kinda, you're up against the wall, you don't know how to fix it? You broke something or something's not working, you're frustrated, you're pulling out your hair. This is a great place just to remember this little saying, don't struggle, outsource. If you find yourself in a place where you're stalled and you can't get the work done or you're, 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 you're buried in some technical issues and it's causing you to not be working on the areas of the business that actually cause the income, you need to get somebody to help and take care of that little technical problem because it's stalling you out. We need to be focused on revenue generating activities. Let's face it, the technical end of the business is very important, but if we run into a little issue, by the time we're done tonight, you're going to realize you can just head over to Elance and in about three minutes, post a little project and find half a dozen people anywhere in the world who will be happy to fix it for you for probably 20 or 30 bucks in most cases for most types of problems. Now having said all this, I also understand that outsourcing for a lot of people is something that they've never done or you've never done. And it can be a little bit nerve wracking because the act of hiring somebody to do some work is something that unless you've done it, it's uncomfortable. And I could actually remember back to a time when I, I was a journeyman carpenter and I was out working in the field and doing carpentry work and loving it, having a great time. And I remember one time wandering into an, the general contractor's office and he was very busy and he had some fires that he was putting out and he needed to be focused on what he was working on. And he looks over to me and says, I need you to call the plumber. And he handed me this guy's business card and he wanted me to phone this guy and handle this issue. I'll tell you what, it terrified me. I didn't know what I was going to say. I don't know what plumbers do. I'm a 
Carpenter. I know, you know, I was literally, this was a big deal for me, having to pick up that phone and actually call the plumber to get him into the job to take care of whatever needed to be done at the time. So I understand that there might be a little apprehension because of that in this case. Same goes online. So just if you're suffering from that a little bit, I'm just going to encourage you to put it aside as we dig in and we go through and that you actually, at the end of this session, I'm going to encourage you all to go and, and sign up for probably a couple of these freelance services. They're free just so you can get your feet wet and you can get in there and you can begin to post some projects, regardless if you think you have any work that needs to be done now or not. And I would think by the time we're done tonight, you're going to realize you can outsource all kinds of stuff. And the work that you were going to get done this month, you can probably get done in the next few days if you employ the talents of a couple of other people in the world who'd love to do the work for you. And I think you're going to find you're going to be stunned and amazed at how how cost effective this is and how little it does cost, especially because we can now outsource to people who live in other countries where the money that we earn, at least in this continent, and for people that I'm talking to are usually earning U.S. dollars, and a U.S. dollar in a place like Romania and Russia is worth a whole bunch more than it is here. So to hire somebody and pay them 10 or $20, you can get the work done that you would normally pay a hundred or two hundred dollars and you have just as happy a person if not more so because they so much appreciate the revenue. So let's talk about what to outsource and I think you might be surprised by this. I outsource just about everything. There's hardly, other than you know working in front of my computer and going through, I, uh, one of my writers just sent me over uh, a new article today. I went through it with her. She did the writing. I'm just approving it. I spent five minutes on it. She probably spent two hours on it. If I was to spend two hours on it, I'd be losing money. She spent two hours on it. I spent five minutes on it. I'm making money. So some of the things that you want to, you might want to consider outsourcing, regardless of where you are in the business. In fact, let me throw out a question to everybody that's here in the room tonight. How many of you have a website that's currently up and running that is what you would call 80% finished? Let's put it that way. How many of you have a website online so it's actually published and that it's 80% finished? Because let's face it, it seems like these websites are never quite done. There's always something that can be done. So Sherry says yes, Paula yes, Chris 81%, good for you Chris. Donald is a yes, Rochelle's a yes, Tammy's no, not yet. Uh, Randy's a yes, Latanya's a yes, Winston, Lily, Winston and Lily are both yeses, William's a yes, David and Linda are both no's and Bill is 15% and Bill's just getting started. So good timing for all of you. Steve is a no. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the things that you can outsource. Website templates, the look of our website. Of course, as we get through the Affiliate Marketer's Handbook, in step number four, when we get actually get into this whole area of website development, there's a number of options that we have to use that we can, uh, different types of software that we can use to build our websites, whether it's Microsoft's front page or ExciteProWeb.com, very cool little online site builder that's available or Dreamweaver which I'm not a huge fan of because I find it's very long learning curve or some of you may be using it to services like Joomla or WordPress or a variety of other website builders. Anytime you, you use a website builder you always need a template and if you were to try and develop a template yourself and I know many people do However, if you go do a Google search for templates, for, for example, WordPress templates or Joomla templates, you will find literally dozens of websites who do nothing but create templates for those software programs. And you can usually buy a beautiful looking website for 15, 20, 25, 35, 45, 50 bucks. Something that you would normally pay if you were to walk into a local graphics designer and hire them to build this from scratch, it would not be unusual for you to spend a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars to get the same look 
for a site where you can go to one of these other sites, do a little Google search for Joomla templates or a little Google search for WordPress templates, and you can get the same look for 35 bucks. Can't, can't beat it. So there's no point in doing this yourself. Header graphics. Most of these templates have, they come, they're, they're, they're finished, they're done, they're ready to go, they're ready to go out the door, but we need to have a, a few graphics developed for them to personalize them to ourselves for our topics so they are custom to us. So whether you want to put your smiling face up in the left-hand corner, which is always a good idea, if you want to personalize your website so it's yours, so you'll, you'll find you'll take much more ownership of it if you've got your face on there, I guarantee it. So whether you want to do that or you want to have a nice looking header graphic, something that's very professional, that really sets off the template, so when that visitor arrives on the site, it's like, oh, this is nice, exactly what I'm looking for. Other things that you can outsource, illustrations, charts, these types of things that you can put on your pages to help your visitors when they land on that page so they will stay longer and be exposed to more advertising so you have more opportunity to keep them on the page and move them through to the merchant where they can make a purchase so you can earn a commission. Of course, things like images, little buttons, all kinds of things. Give you an example. I developed a little service called PageLeap.com, and it's a free internet start page service for people who want to have a little start page where they can keep their goals in front of them, have their little links in front of them, so they can, so they're not having to retype links all the time. So I wanted to put this little service together, and I wanted to create a little library, actually quite an extensive library, of images. So if somebody had the goal of a Hummer, they could just go into the library and go click, and they would take the picture of the Hummer and put it right on the page in front of them. So every time they logged onto the net, there's that Hummer in front of them. And we've all been taught, you've got to keep your goals in front of you. So I think the best way to do that is put it on your start page on your Internet screen. Same with when it comes to typing in links. There's no point in us continually retyping in www dot and then the same website address that we visit over and over again. If we could just put it on a link to it on the start page, all we'd have to do is go click and we're there. When we're done on that website, we hit the home button, which takes us back to our start page, and we can start over again. So you can become more efficient. So I wanted to have these little images developed, so I headed over to a website called iStockPhoto.com where you can buy beautiful images, beautiful photos for anywhere between a buck or two. So I went through and I picked out a hundred of them. And now these were just the raw photos, the beautiful photos. They're too big, too high res for the net too big for my needs and I'm not a graphics guy and I don't know how to deal with graphics and put drop shadows and resize and all that type of thing. So I went over to Elance and I posted a little project and I'll tell you the steps to doing that in a bit. Posted a little project before I knew it, usually it happens within a day or two, all kinds of service providers log in and they start bidding on your project. So I needed to have these 100 little photos resized and I needed them to be exactly the right size and I wrote the little description it took me probably five minutes to say what I needed within I'm just looking at the project now I had 19 bids come in the average bid out of all 19 was sixty seven dollars and sixty five cents bids came in from Indiana India uh, I don't know where that place is somewhere else in the east another India USA uh, UA, wherever that is, United somewhere, Buenos Aires, Illinois, Maine, New Delhi, India, Stockholm, Sweden, Fails Bad, Pakistan, Ontario, Canada, and Georgia, United States, and, and so on. So within a day or two, all these bids come in from all these different service providers saying, hey, I'm, I'm the guy for your project. I want to do this for you. And I'm here's my bid. This one guy bid 50 bucks. Another guy bid 100. Somebody else bid 150. Was one in here at 75. There's a 60. Just like eBay as well. There's a whole feedback system in here, so you can go in and look at the service providers' feedback, see how many jobs they've done for other people, what they've said, and then once you're happy with that, you can award the project. And I'll go through those steps in a minute. 
But that's an example of something that I needed to outsource. I could have bought a, a, a photo editing product. I could have learned how to do all that. I probably could have done it in a few hours. And even if I was good at it, it would have still taken me a few hours. I ended up awarding the project to a gentleman named Matt Symbiotic Media in Maine, USA for $50. He's done a total of 148 projects in Elance. He has a 4.9 out of 5, and he's done $57,795 worth of freelance work through the Elance system. That's just one guy. Elance has over 100,000 service providers that range that cover just about anything. And if uh, for those that are maybe near their computers, if you type in postnewproject.com that'll take you right to the page where you will find everything uh, you need for Elance that's postnewproject.fine somebody asked earlier what was the name of the internet start page service it's called pageleap.com pageleap all one word dot com and it's a free service other things that you might want to outsource Book covers, reports, everybody sees my Coffee Talk series, beautiful little CD covers for the web. The book, the Affiliate Marketer's Handbook has a great cover. The Affiliate Buzz audio newsletter that I do has a nice little CD cover. My Hiring Authors Report has a cover. Google Mastery, all of these little report covers are low cost, inexpensive to have developed. You just need to know where to do it. It's These are the kinds of services that are available online. The gentleman that I have at my fingertips who helps me with these covers, his name's Vaughn Davidson. His website is killercovers.com. He does all kinds of stuff. Covers, little, if you need, if you've got a piece of software you're selling, or an ebook or an audio, he's got all little covers that represent the product that you can put on your website that just brings the level of quality up, the level of professionalism up because you've outsourced it to people like this. Even little things that can make a big difference on a website. For those of you that are writing articles or letters online, it's nice to have your little signature as an image down at the bottom of the page. So if you have a little graphic designer over at Elance, post a project that says, I want to have my signature put into a little JPEG, so anytime that I'm creating a web page, I can put my signature there. Same with your smiling face. If you've got a headshot or a nice image of yourself that you can put in your articles as you're writing them and on your website, it can help to really bring your websites to life. This is a great thing to outsource. You can get this done for 10 or 20 bucks. Of course, text, article writing, all kinds of text-based projects, everything that you can imagine in the area of having content created for your website. I'm just going to pull up this page on Elance just to give you a general idea of some of the things that are available to you for to hire, just in the area of writing. It's amazing. Like if you click on the writing tab in Elance, you've got blog writing, ebook writing, emails and newsletters, keyword articles, SEO writing, and then that list continues. You've got copywriting, ad copy, brochure writing, news articles, press releases, sales letters. You've got copy or you've got ghost writing, essay writing, speech writing, and so on. There's literally dozens of different styles of writing, they're all available in Elance. When you get back and you go have a look at postnewproject.com and you look at this page, you'll see all the services that are available for you to uh, hire. Now, when it comes to having text-based articles or different, form, different styles of text written for your site, of course, you can have that done in Elance. One of the things that I like to do when I'm building a new website, and I'm at the point now where I don't do a lot of writing for my websites. Most of it, in fact, 99% of it, I outsource. So if I'm creating a brand new website, I'll actually figure it all out up front, assign the keywords just like we do in the training. I've got the work orders in there and all the way that we organize the content for the writer. I'll have them write everything. So I'll, I'll figure out what my home page is going to be about. I'll figure out what my product pages are going to be about. I uh, will decide, okay, I want a contact us page, a message from the editor page, an about us page a privacy policy, 
maybe a terms of use agreement, a link to us page, a recommended resources page, press release page, a site map, maybe some newsletters and some ongoing articles. And I'll map this all out on the document and I'll go in and I'll find a writer and I'll hire them to do the whole thing in one fell swoop. And for those that are you, those that are just getting started and writing yourself, that's fine, and that's definitely a great way to get started. For those that have been around or have a little bit of money that they can invest in getting this uh, type of writing done, it can really speed things up. If you find you're struggling with the writing, the goal here is to get the website up and running so we can go get the backlinks, so we can get these sites ranking in the search results. We don't want to get stuck in the technical end of the business because we don't know how to do something. We want to move this as quickly as we can from an idea to an actual website that is ranking, that's making money, without getting bogged down in the details. And I know the details, especially for those getting started, can seem like a lot of work, but if you stick with it and you, you do outsource a little bit and you get some help with the technical end of your business, you can really move this thing at a much quicker pace so you don't have to be going slowly uh, when you're getting started. You can really accelerate this. If you're looking to have reviews done on products, you might want to outsource that to a writer. PDFs. Another example would be if you run into a problem with a document. I'll give you an example. I wrote another little ebook for one of my sites. It was about 39 pages long. I developed it in Microsoft Word, and I cut and pasted an ori my original Word document into a new file, and then I ended up creating this entire little booklet. It's more like a booklet. And I ended up messing up all the coding that comes within Microsoft Word that automatically sets your headers, your footers, automatically builds your table of contents, and your index at the back. And I completely messed it up. I don't know what I did wrong. I did everything wrong. This thing was a disaster. I went into Elance. I posted a little project, basically said what I just said there. I have a disaster that I need to have corrected, posted the project, a nice lady from New York City, one of, was one of the bidders, she came in, 150 bucks, I awarded it to her, she gave me back this absolute Microsoft Word programmed masterpiece, and I still use it today for other little things that I do, because it's now it's basically a template that I can use over and over again, but she did an absolutely amazing job, and I was at the point where I didn't know how to fix it, I, I mean, I didn't even know how to start over and fix it, and I was stuck, so... Don't struggle, outsource. It's a, it's a great little thing to remember because it can really move your business along at a fast, fast pace. Other things that you may want to outsource is content for your blog. Hire somebody to add a, a post every day or every other day. 100 words, 200 words, whatever you're working on. But set it up so it goes long term. So if you're going to pay them 5 bucks a post and you're going to do 3 a week, that's $15 a week. You know, in a month you're going to pay 60 bucks, but you're going to have three times four is 12 nice little posts on your blog, and you didn't have to do it because you can give them the login and you can let them do all the work. Give them the direction up front so they can go in and do the work. If you've got a newsletter that you're sending out, and I love doing this, this is a great idea. And this is something I've been doing for a while. If you have a newsletter that needs to go out and it's going to go out every two weeks or once a month, whatever your schedule is. Outsource it. Get to know a writer. Hire a writer. I use Kelly Fowler over at dotcomcopy.com. She's my writer. Works for me for a couple years now. She's absolutely dynamite. And I originally found her at Elance. That's another thing. When you're working with Elance, once you find the good ones, keep them because they're worth gold to you. So put them under contract for you. If you know you're going to be doing a newsletter every two weeks and you're busy and maybe you're working at your job still, ha hire that out to somebody who can handle it for you. Obviously, you need to give them direction. I'm going to cover that in a little bit when we get down to how to outsource. But if you, if you do that kind of thing and you, you get them to do the work, it frees your, your, your time up so much more so you can be focused on other things in your business. Nice thing about newsletters, too, is you can repurpose the content. For example, you have a nicely written newsletter sent to you from your writer who put it together for you and you send that out to your email list, 
Then you take the same newsletter and you also put it on your website. So now you've got another piece of content. And if you're sending out a newsletter every two weeks, within the period of a year, you've got 26 very nicely written pieces of content on your website because every newsletter you've put on your site and put it on its own page, probably developed a little archive so people can look back through your newsletter archives. Of course, you've got your, your ads in there for your merchants, the ones that you're representing, or you've got some Google ads in there. So when people come to those pages, you've got a way to get paid if somebody clicks through to those merchants. Same with anything like small ebooks or reports, things that you want to offer to your visitors. If you've got a website that you have a newsletter, for example, and you want to give them a little enticement to join your newsletter, why not develop a little four or five page report, get your writer to do it, develop a beautiful little report on something related to your topic that you know they're going to be very interested in, that gives them good value, Get over to a site like KillerCovers.com, hire Vaughn, get him to build you a beautiful little cover for it so it looks very professional. And then when somebody comes to your website, you can say, okay, here's my newsletter. Join my newsletter and you'll get this free report. If you don't know how to set up a newsletter or an email list to capture those names, outsource it. Audio and video. Audio is one of my favorites. I do a lot of video as well, but audio is something that I do a lot of, but I also like to tart it up a little bit. I like to put some music on the front of it. I like to have them cleaned up a little bit from time to time. Maybe I need a little bit of editing done. Maybe I want to send it out as a podcast and so on. So, But I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I know how to do the audio voice part of it, but I don't know how to do the recording. I don't know how to do the music. I don't know how to do the editing. I don't even have a piece of software that can do that. So I outsource it. I just finished off when we do the, if you go in into the affiliate marketers bootcamp.com website and you click on site pages and you go down into either the coffee talks or the live Q&As that are also recorded that we do every Monday evening or the first Monday of each month there's a nice little what we call an intro so when you click on it and you listen to the audio you hear a nice professionally produced intro which has a professional voice talent that records it and puts some music to it then at the end of the coffee talk or the end of the live Q&A audio you hear what's called an outro and there again is the same professional voice talent that gives the listener a little bit of direction where they might want to find more information and then they put a little music on it and it just cleans it up makes it sound so much better and you can go into Elance and you can outsource that type of thing and it's very inexpensive for me to have the intro and the outro done for the Coffee Talk series of interviews cost me a hundred bucks. I use it. I've already used them both, both the intro and the outro somewhere around. I think there's all, coming up to around 20 Coffee Talks. I paid that hundred bucks. I own it. I don't need to pay for it anymore. And I can just put that on the front and the back of every show from this point forward. Or actually, Dennis in Montreal does it for me because I don't know how to do it. And I, quite frankly, I don't want to know how to do it because that's not really where the money is. The money is getting these websites ranking, getting them to the top of the list. That's what we need to be focused on doing, not the detail end of the business. I also decided that I want to do another couple of podcasts. So I've done them. They're recorded. They're up and they're online. And I've decided to, and they're, 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 I've taken them from the coffee talks and I wanted to use them as a bit of a promo and I've also taken a few shows from the Affiliate Buzz, and I've had those packaged up nicely. I've had Kelly Fowler, my writer, come in, go through the audios, and develop a nice description for each. I've got the audio. They've got the bumper music on. They're ready to go. But now what I wanted to do was have them submitted to the top ten podcast directories so I can get the links back to my website and so I can push these shows out to more people so I can build the business quick or, or in a faster way. This applies to you guys as well. Don't make the mistake of thinking I can't do audio or I can't do a podcast or I can't get this stuff out there because I don't know how to do most of this stuff myself. I just outsource it. So if you've got an idea for a podcast 
that will benefit your visitors and help you create more revenue to your site and build trust and build loyalty and have ways to keep them coming back, get a piece of paper out tonight, write down some ideas to get some audio on your website. These 15 podcasts that I put together, these 15 audios, it totals somewhere in the neighborhood of probably four and a half hours worth of audio. I wanted to send them out and have them all submitted to the podcast directories. So I went out to the directories and I started searching around for them and having a look at them. And you can go to places like podcast.net and you can submit your podcast to those directories. And they will publish it there for you. So then anybody coming into that website searching for that topic will probably find my podcast, my audio show that will be sitting in there. But I didn't have a lot of time to submit to all these directories. I could see that it's a pretty big job. So I went into Elance and I just typed a little message that says, I'm looking for someone to submit 15 existing MP3 podcasts to the top 10 podcast directories. I already have the headlines, descriptions, and content for the submissions because I had Kelly write it. And I'm simply looking for someone to locate the podcast directories and do the submissions. Now there's 15 of them and I want, there's 15 podcasts or 15 MP3 audios, and I want each one of them hand submitted to 10 different directories. So that's 150 manual submissions. It's going to take some time, and I don't quite frankly have the time to do that, so I decided to post it as a project. And, and I awarded it to a gentleman, gentleman named Terry Daniel, and he says, Good morning, I produce many podcasts and have done several submissions for directories for both podcasts as well as websites. If you need more information on my work, please visit my website or just Google voiceovers by Terry Daniel. Thanks again. So I ended up awarding this to Terry and the, the price is $200 which works out to be $1.25 per submission. Can't beat it. Absolutely great. He's going to handle it all. I just handed it to him Next time I hear from Terry will probably be for a question or two he might have or to tell me that the job is done uh, and that he's ready to get paid for the work. So when you're building on your websites and you're working on your own sites, think about coming up with some content. Let's face it, audio and video is coming on strong on the net. And it's not rocket science. But most websites are not paying attention to this. Most of your competitors are not doing this. And this is not that difficult. This is very doable. Simple. All, my headset that I'm recording out of right now cost me 20 bucks. I'm being recorded over, you know, through the computer. Simple stuff, not complicated. When this is done, gets a little bit of a mix, puts a bumper music front and back, and then we upload it. And I don't do any of it because, quite frankly, I don't have the temperament for it. I end up smashing my keyboard. drives me crazy. And it's much cheaper for me to just hire it out. And it gets done quicker. And then I can focus on the stuff I like to do and move the business ahead at a much faster, faster pace. Video is another thing. Obviously, there's all kinds of video online now. We've got YouTube. We've got all kinds of video directories where we could submit video. One of the things that you're going to want to... Put on your to-do list for sure if you've got a little camera. How many of you have a, a little video camera that, you know, like a little candy cam, little digital video camera? Arlene and I bought one a few years ago. I still use it. Tammy says yes. David, yes. Donald, yes. Cassandra, Latanya, Chris. So Paula, Rochelle. So everybody, or you could probably borrow one from a friend if you don't have them. They're plentiful now. Lots of camera phones, even the, especially the new ones produced some pretty good video. When I was in Valencia, Spain last year, last year, I was taken over there by one on one hosting to take in the America's Cup yacht race. So here I am, sitting in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, watching them race yachts. One of the guys from one on one had a camera phone, and quite frankly, I think the Europeans' phones are way better than ours. He's videotaping the entire conference, everything. He's got like 200 little videos in this phone of his, crystal clear, beautiful, editing. And then when he's done with them, he pushes a, a button. It, change, it changes the, the video he just took to a web format, pushes the button, and it uploads it to his website automatically. It's like, i got to figure out how to do this. I haven't done that yet. But that's the kind of thing. That's content. We can add all this kind of content to our websites. 
Other things that we can outsource. Technical support. If we need little scripts made for our website, if you've got an idea for something that you want to develop a little script around that you can add to your website, hire somebody at one of these companies. Go over to Elance. Go to postingproject.com. Go to getcoder.net. Get, go to rentcoder.net. These are great places where you can post your projects for free and see who comes in and bids on them. And just because you're posting them doesn't mean you need to actually follow through. It can be a re reconnaissance mi mission. You want to see who's available to do the work and what it's going to cost. Post the project. If you want to have some work done on your blog, if you want to have a forum installed, if you want to have some calculator created, if you've got a loan site or a mortgage style, you want to put a mortgage calculator together. If, you want, if you've got an idea for a cool little tool that you can create, or a survey, or polling your, your visitors, or you want to have a shopping cart installed, anything, outsource it. I've had a lot of questions about how do I install a data feed. You know basically what the answer is? I have no idea. Go hire somebody at Elance to do it. They can do it in about 20 minutes. That's how you install a data feed. You want to have RSS feeds on your site? Hire somebody to put the RSS feed on your website. How do I have the RSS feeds on some of my sites? I don't know. I didn't do it. If you want to have a little database created on your website so you can collect information or you can parlay information back to your visitors, any idea that you can think of, go to getcoder.net, rentcoder.net, or Elance and post the project. See what they come in. I posted a little project over at Get a Coder, and I had four people, four of the guys come back to me and tell me that they can do the work. Bids, I figured it probably cost me 500, 500 bucks to have it done. The top bid was $130. The lowest bid was 75 So even though I thought I had a general idea of what it was going to cost, I was way off. It was way cheaper than I thought it would be to get the work done. Administrative support. If you need help with customer service, if you have bookkeeping or accounting issues, legal services, legal issues you need dealt with, if you want to get incorporated, if you want to deal with copyright th theft, any of this stuff, go over to postnewproject.com, Elance, post a project, and when I say there's 100,000 plus service providers in there, they cover anything that you could possibly ever imagine that you could ever need done on your website. They're available there, whether it's a lawyer, an accountant, a graphic designer, somebody who's going to write for you, do press releases. Press releases is a great example. Last week I had an opportunity to interview Kelly Fowler from .comcopy.com where we talked all about press releases. And she's handled my press for two years now and I don't actually even do the submission. She does it all. I needed a press release to announce the launch of my next upcoming boot camp, the Backlinks Workshop, the next uh, inbound link building workshop which is coming up and I wanted to send out a press, for, press release for this. So I sent her off a little email and it gave her some ideas that uh, here's what I think I sh it, it should be about, but I basically leave it up to her, send it off to her, she comes back with the draft, I go through, make some changes, send it back to her, she finishes off the changes, I spend five minutes on it and approve it, then she goes and submits it to a little service called PR Web, and she submitted it yesterday. And I go and I look at it today. It's been accepted and published, and it's number one currently on Google for the keyword phrase on Google News in the Google News area because it's news for the keyword phrase inbound links and the keyword phrase backlinks and all kinds of other topics. Kelly did all the work. I outsourced it to her, and it, it's done. Another great example of, of content or text that you can do have outsourced to uh, move your businesses forward. Dynamite stuff, absolutely dynamite. Blows me away every time we do it. We've also posted, what I've done is I've, as we went through this whole thing of outsourcing these press release, or this press release to Kelly, for those that are private members, if you log into the forum at affiliatemarketersbootcamp.com and you scroll down and you see the little link that says Inbound Link Building Workshop and you click on that, the very first thread says the press release. And in there, I put the little story of how I 
hired Kelly to do this. The email that I'd sent to her requesting her write me the press release, her correspondence back to me, then my correspondence back to her, then she posted the actual press release in the form so people can see it, and then she submitted it to PR Web, and then the rest of the dialogue below that where PR Web has accepted it, and here's where you can find it, number one on Google, number one for, you know, and it's ranking for a bunch of keywords that I put in there in Google Alerts. And as well, it's I used, as Sherry just said, I used Google Alerts. And I'll answer your question there in just a second there, Sherry. Okay, so that's that's pretty much what you can outsource and anything else that you can possibly think of. Those are the things that I've outsourced to date. Uh, other than my Cobra, I wanted to have a Cobra built, and I don't know how to build Cobras. Guess what I did? I hired a guy in Calgary, Alberta, to build me a Cobra. I'm good at this outsourcing thing. If you want to figure this business out, if you do, not, do nothing else, get good at outsourcing, because if you can hire the professionals to do the work, you can, you can make this thing sing. Okay, so outsourcing, how to outsource. It's really quite simple, and I'm going to go through some details now, and you may want to get a pen and paper handy, or just listen up. Essentially, it boils down to four very simple steps that I'll give you an outline of first, and then we'll dig into the meat of it. But essentially, the first step would be is head over to a place like Elance and post what you need done. So go after you've signed up for a free account, post what you need done, and just common language. You don't need to be you know, elegant at this, just type it in. It usually takes me 5, 10, 15 minutes to write what I want. I'm basically just writing an email to a potential service provider outlining what I want to have done. Number two is once all the bids start coming in, I just look at the feedback and I go through and I might private message them back through the system and ask them a question or two, and then when I'm happy with the one that I want to go with and I like the price and they sound good to me and I look that they've got good feedback, I just award the project. Once that's done, I simply just manage the process from there. If they've got questions for me, I'll answer them, but essentially they're doing the work, and I'll give you some tips on that in a second. And then when I'm happy with the work and I've received it from them, whether it be articles or images or technical support or whatever they've done, when I'm happy with it, I pay them, usually through PayPal. I log that in the Elant system, and then I, then I give them the feedback. So if they've done some good work, I'll give them a nice rating so uh, they get the credit for doing the work. Now, very important stuff, though. When dealing with techies, when dealing... And I, to me, techies is a very broad word. It's one of these words that I use across the board for any service provider. Typically, when you picture a techie, you probably see a guy with thick glasses and tape holding them together. No, no. To me, a techie is anybody who's doing the technical end of the business or the technical work, whether it's writing, whether it's programming, whether it's graphics design, whether it's anything to do with that stuff. You, you have to, when you're dealing with the outsourcing area of the business, it's important to understand it's up to you, the person who's posting the project, to be crystal clear on what you want and that it's well communicated in writing to the person you're outsourcing prior to awarding them the project. If you make the mistake of saying, I want to have an article written, but you don't think it through up front, and you don't give them any detail or direction, and you push the work to them, I can guarantee you, without fail, you're going to be disappointed because you're not going to get the result that you didn't know you wanted back in the first place. In other words, if you don't know what you need or what you want when you're buying it, there's no way that you're going to get it because you don't know what you want. So it's imperative that you take the time to sit down with a pen and paper or on your computer, and if you're going to have an article written, even if it's painful for the first few, you want to make sure you're crystal clear on what you want the article to be about or what you want the press release to be about. They need some direction. You don't have to give them all the work, of course, but you need to give them some direction. When it comes to things like 
having articles written. Let me give you an example. If I, in fact, I've got a project in there right now. I've got 16 articles being written for me by one of the service providers. And I awarded the project this morning, and we've gone back and forth a couple of times. But any time I order multiple articles, whether it's 16 or 60, I want to see the first few articles from the big project that they're working on right away within a day or two so I can go through them, have a look at them, make sure they're on track, make sure that they're, they are at the level of quality that I want, that they're doing a good job, or so that I can make any adjustments and suggestions to them so I don't get 60 articles that are all wrong. So when you're, if you're going to go in there and order yourself 10 articles, have them, have them develop a couple of them for you first. So have them write the first one or two articles, send them to you, go through them, make sure you're happy with what you're seeing, and then have them do the rest of the work. Don't allow them to go too long. One of the things that I find, if you've posted a project and say you need 60 articles done within the next 30 days, don't wait 30 days not hearing from your service provider before you send them a message making sure you're getting these articles back as they're working through the month. Otherwise, what could happen at the end of the month, you might just be without your articles because they may not have got them done. Maybe they're too busy. Maybe they should not, shouldn't have taken on that project. So I find once I've submitted the project, I like to keep my hand on their shoulder a little bit, email them, message them, get them to supply me with some of the sample work that they're working on or some of the stuff that they're doing so I can just know and rest assured that the work that I've ordered from them or requested from them is being done to my satisfaction. So techies, the biggest thing when you're dealing with the graphic designers or the, the copywriters or anybody in Elance is understanding that it's up to you to manage the job. As a general contractor, it's ultimately my responsibility that that building goes up properly I can blame the subtrades later on all day long. It doesn't make any difference. The buck stops at the general contractor. Same with us as we're hiring these service providers in places like Elance. Uh, it's up to us to make sure they're doing the work that we want and we need, to, we need to manage that process and make sure that we're working alongside them. And then while you're doing that though, and once you start to get into the Elance area, you start to find these little gems of people like a Kelly Fowler where you can you say, okay, now I've got my writer. I don't need to go find any more writers. Or Matt, who handles all my graphics, I don't need to go in and find more people for graphics because these people are now part of my team. And anytime I need them, I can just post a project and award it to them. A couple of types of projects that I do in Elance. There's always the projects that I do that are the one-offs. I need to have a handful of graphics developed for a website or I have, I've decided I'm going to put on some pie charts or some illustrations or I need some hand drawings done. I post those projects in Elance. I find the guy. I award the project. He gives me the graphics or the, whatever he was working on. I pay him and we're done and I don't probably need him again for a long time. Those are one-time projects and you're probably going to be dealing with a lot of those yourself. Other types of projects though are the ongoing projects and they're the ones that I like the best because if you take your time and you set these up they can save you all kinds of time and all kinds of money down the road plus you can build your business at a much quicker pace and these are some really key areas that you may want to write down things that you can automate that you can hand off to others so you can Focus on the money areas of your business. I'm going to give you five things that you can really dig into. If you're having articles created for your website, and I assume you are, and you should be adding an article a week to your website regardless of whatever you're doing, and it should be a very well-researched, very interesting, informative article, of course, focused on a keyword phrase or two that you want it to rank for, and you give all that information to your writer, if you know your website and you've got a plan in place for, say, the next 12 months for your website where you're going to add an article a week or one every two weeks, whatever your budget allows, you then find the writer. You can go into Elance, post a project that says something like, I'm looking for a, a professional writer to develop one article every week for me for 52 weeks on this subject. Give them some of the basic details. You don't need to get into huge detail at this point until you actually award the project, 
But you want to outline what the work is. I expect the articles to be six to 800 words in length, well-researched, well-written, grammar checked, spelling checked, informative, timely, you know, and give them what you want. You've got to sit down and figure out what you want in, a, in an overall view. You don't need, we're not detailing each article at this point, but just give them a really good overview. Uh, I need one article a week, six, six to 800 words in length. It needs to have a great headline, two subheadlines. I want some bullet points in there. I want you to well-research it, and then you just go down the list and you give them all the details. Then they will come in, and I guarantee you the writers love these projects because they're looking for steady work too. Just like you're, you're, you're looking for steady content coming back, they're looking for steady work. And if they can have a client like you who's going to pay them once a week for every article that they create, they're going to love you. So post it in there for a long period of time. Then work with that writer for the first few weeks to make sure these first articles that are coming back, the one article a week, are what you're looking for. And then you can basically cut them loose and let them create that content for you every week for the next 52 weeks so that you know at the end of the year you've got 52 great articles on your website. And if you guys would just do that alone, you'd be so far of your head so far ahead of your competition that uh, their heads would spin. Really good quality content will be coming back. If you can give your writer access to your website so they can actually not only create the content but add it to your website, even better. The more hands off you can be, the better. Number two, so the first one was articles. Number two, pad articles. For those of you that are working on the pad technique, and I've been peeking in on the forum, and I can see it's a few of you are really starting to get the hang of this, and you're having some great success, and congratulations to you. There was a very interesting post in there from uh, Dan, who sent out all kinds of emails. I think he said 25 emails, and had no responses to the first 25 emails that he sent to uh, potential pad partners, people who would post an article on their website with backlinks to, to his site so he can get the natural search rankings. And he was basically skunked on the first 25 emails he sent out. He said he heard from nobody for a week. He had no response. So he sent the second email in the series. And to the same 25 people, he had 10 responses. And guess what Dan's doing now? Creating pad articles, and out the door they go. So if you can get yourself a writer handy to develop your pad articles, even better. Let them do the work. I was also noticing somebody in the forum talking about it, them taking three hours to write a pad article. And I know Paula had hired somebody at, uh, I think, GetCoder, .net to write them for nine bucks a piece. Now they weren't perfect articles and she needed to clean them up, add to them and create the headlines and stuff, but they had thought out the ideas and they were basically giving her the raw material and Paula could really be quick in getting that done versus somebody else who's spending three, hour, three hours creating an article uh, when they could have had it for nine bucks. So. If you're working for three hours and, ha and somebody else could have did it for you for $9, you're basically working for $3 an hour, and uh, you're not going to get very far very quick at that pace because uh, it's just too slow. So that was number two, articles and pad articles. Number three, something else you can automate over a long period of time. We touched upon this earlier. If you've got a blog on your website, and I had a look at Sherry's new blog, and she's done a great job on it, and it's very nicely done, and congratulations on that. If, you want, if you're posting every day yourself, wonderful. That's great. Or every other day, perfect. But if you don't have the time to be posting on your blog, hire a writer to write a 100, 200 word blog post. Costs you five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, depending on how many words. If they're short and they're quick, you can get it done very inexpensively, and if they're a great writer and they're good and they do a little bit of research, they can be very informative and interesting posts. And if you had them do two of those a day, or sorry, a week, over the period of a year, you'd have 104 more pages of content on your website. Very inexpensive, very easy to do, very quick. We touched on newsletters earlier. This is the number four thing. Hire it out to have your newsletters created. Push them out to your list as you're growing your list. And if you haven't started a newsletter on your website, you probably want to go listen to my Coffee Talk interview with Ian Lee. And we covered this whole area of developing a newsletter for your website. And you shouldn't delay on that once you get your traffic starting to come through the door. And you'll hear why when you listen to that Coffee Talk. 
but newsletters is a great thing to hand off to your writer. And if you can find a writer to handle all of this for you, so that they get to know you and your style and how you like things done, and they understand your topic, and you've contracted with them for, let's say you're going to pay them $100 a month to do all this stuff for you. Well worth your time. Get them to do your blog post. Have them write a newsletter for you once a month. Have them commit to doing some of the pad articles and maybe one article a week or every couple of weeks. Give them access to your site so they can post the content as well so you don't have to be doing this all the time so you can be focused on other areas of your business. And the other point, the last point, number one was articles, number two was pad articles, number three were blog posts, number four newsletters, and number five is press releases. I think we've probably just seen with this little example that I decided to go live with so I could show everybody how quick and effective this is. Hired Kelly a couple weeks ago, just sent her a little note. This is what's posted in the forum. I said, I want to have a press release done for my upcoming inbound link workshop. Here's what I think. Gave her a few notes, half a page. I posted that page in the forum for those that want to look at it. She came back to me with a draft. We went back and forth on it once or twice. I was happy with it. She submitted it. Within one day, it ended up in number one position on Google News for the holy grail keywords, inbound links and backlinks. It's also showing up on some other sites, and my, hint, my, my feeling is it's probably going to show up on a few more good places as well. But if it doesn't, it's already hugely advantageous to me. For those that were with me through the first backlinks workshop, you learned about that little tool called Sightning where you could take a website address and put it into the tool. little free service over at sightning.com where you can check the quality of a website where your link is going to reside. So you can make sure that you're not wasting your time so that if you do get a link on there, you know the search engines like them and they trust them so you can get the most impact from that inbound link, from that piece of content that you had placed. So this article, or sorry, this press release that Kelly submitted is currently and now listed at prweb.com in their archives. It's up top and it'll settle back in. It's at PRWeb. Their sightening score is 100 out of 100. It's an absolutely powerhouse inbound link back to my website. You can't, I, I would almost say you can't buy that, but you can. And not, and not to mention the promotional value alone of the press release sitting up at the top of Google News right now for the primary keywords. Not to mention half a dozen other that I just quickly checked. They're all within the top three spots, and I posted those in the forum as well. So far, the press release is also over on the eMedia Wire website as well, and they have a 95 out of 100 sightening score. Absolutely dynamite. These are killer links back to my site that you uh, will, will do nothing but hugely benefit me in the area of inbound links. Kelly has an amazing service that she does it all for me. I outsource it all. We do press releases quite often and I can't, I can't speak highly enough for it. And that is just a, a great example of uh, how quickly these press releases can give you the inbound links back to your websites. So in the area of, of outsourcing, get a team together. Get a little team of people. You don't need an army. If you've got a graphics designer that you can call upon, well, if you're building a website and you figure, oh, you know, it would be really cool if I had a few images here. If I had an image of this and an image of that, or if he was to create me a little uh, banner ad for my right-hand column here, or if he would get my signature file done, or do a headshot for me, all kinds of stuff can be done. If you have somebody that can handle the audio for you, even if you're uncomfortable doing the audio yourself, go to Elance, post a project, and say, you know what, I've got a merchant here, uh, and, we're, and he's selling this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go find somebody on Elance who will phone my merchant and interview them for 20 minutes about his products and services so I can get that audio and I can paste that audio on my website so when my visitors come in not only can they read about it they can actually push the button and listen to the owner of the business that's selling the product talk all about the features and the benefits because nobody's going to know more about it than him so you can hire a writer at Elance to do you'd be 
stunned and amazed at how cheap that is because there's all kinds of radio personalities and people that have come out of these media schools that can't find a job, that have great voices, they know how to do this, they're practiced, they're, they're pros, and they're very inexpensive. So you can hire somebody to do that. Under the topic of how to outsource, negotiate your price. If you're going to deal with somebody with one article a week for a year, of course you can get a much better deal than just hiring an article here or there. Same goes for press releases and blog posts and pad articles. Commit to your service providers. They can give you better deals and they can provide you with a much higher quality of work. You want to develop relationships with these people. You want to get to know them. They, you want them to be part of your team. You want to be able to email them and get a response. You want them to be able to turn the work around quickly. You want them to know you, know your business, what you're trying to accomplish. You want them to know what your style is. They may create a style of writing for you. Work with them. Get to know your team. Build relationships. Of course, in the area of a little bit of security, sometimes when you're dealing with writers, you're dealing with technical people, you need to give them passcodes. You need to give them FTP access to your website, maybe. You might need to give them username and password to get into your content management system. When they're done, change your passcode. A little bit of security things. I've never had a problem, but I change my passcodes from time to time. If you've got a service provider that's finished now, done all the work for you, and they've got your username and password, go in and change your passcode. Take you two seconds. Get in the habit of that. Elance, of course, and all of these service providers, for the most part, have a feedback system. So once the provider does the work for you, you can write a nice little note and you can rate the work. I encourage you to do that. Private messaging. Elance has a beautiful internal private messaging service. So all my communication is done within the Elance system. They've got a little email box for me in there that I can reply to the service providers who are asking me questions, and I can send them questions. I don't let them email me because I want all the correspondent, correspondence tracked within the Elance system so I can have a printed record of it, record of it in the system here. It also helps to keep my email box a lot cleaner and it keeps everything all in one place so I can find it. If you're working on a larger project, you can put the funds in escrow so the service provider will know they're going to get paid. But generally speaking, you don't pay until you're happy with the work. Sometimes you'll be asked to put a little deposit in, 10, 15 percent. I'm fine with that. If it's a larger project, you can set up project milestones. Sometimes if you've got work, like 52 articles in a year, you might want to set up a couple of milestones in case things change. Go on a monthly basis just so you can record the work, mark the miles as, as the work gets done. You want to set up the milestones. I would encourage you today, as we wrap this thing up, to head over, type in, if you're in front of your computers, go to postnewproject.com. Don't let the day go by where you haven't set up your account. Make sure you take the time. Go in and set up an account at Elance. It's worth all of the time to do it. Go look around. Go look at the different service providers that are available. You'll be amazed at how many different types of people are available to you in there. Once you start posting some projects, you're going to see that it's very exciting because as the bids come in, when you post a little project and six people within a day come back in and say, hey, I want to do the work for you and here's my price and here's my credentials and here's my profile and here's my feedback, you start to realize that, hey, I can move my business faster just by employing the talents of these other people. Okay. A few minor little things. When you're dealing with the Elance service, take your time. Spell out your projects very clearly and very concisely. As you're getting going, you're going to it's going to take a little bit more time than normal. You'll find once you get into it though, a lot of if you take the time, let's put it this way, if you take the time to spec out 
an article that you want to have written for one of your sites. Next time you need to have another article written, you can use the same specification with some minor, minor adjustments. For those that are owners of the handbook, go to the hiring authors report that's available to all handbook owners. And if you don't know where it is, you go to, in fact, it's a, sorry, let me rephrase it. The hiring authors report is available to all Buzz subscribers, which everybody, I believe, listening to this is probably an affiliate Buzz subscriber. To get to the hiring authors report, you will find my work order for Elance, where I, what I post, what I say to them, exactly what I give them, the instructions I give them, all the detail on how I order articles, and exactly what I say. So sometimes you're wondering, how am I going to post a project? If you want to do writing and you want to sh shortcut this a little bit, go get the hiring authors report. You'll find it over at jamesmartell.com. Obviously, Martell is with two L's, jamesmartell.com. Click on the site map, drill down, and you'll find the, the uh, hiring authors report. You'll find my entire work order system that works in companion to the information that's in the handbook. Don't skip over that. There's also a 20-minute audio in there where I had an a chance to interview Kelly uh, about a year or, year or so ago. It was actually one of the uh, original premises to get the Coffee Talk series going, and I had a chance to uh, you'll hear one of my very first interviews, which was kind of fun. It's about 20 minutes. I'll give you the heads up on Elance, a little bit more of the detail on how to use it. So before we go into a live Q&A here, and I know we've got quite a number of people in the conference room. We've got 30 people in there now. And for those that have, have some questions, maybe you can get them ready, and we'll, I'll answer them in, in just a minute. Just a few items from the events calendar coming up. Uh, on the 21st of June, I've got a Coffee Talk interview, and you don't want to miss this one, with Jim Morris from NicheBot.com or NicheBot.com. Absolute dynamite keyword tool, integrated directly, uses the uh, Word Tracker data. I'm starting to uh, do a lot more keyword searches over there, and I want to get the skinny from Jim on his tool. And I've used his classic version for years. If you head over to nichebotclassic.com, uh, you'll see the original version of it. But over the last, uh, since actually November 2006, when he launched the brand new service, he's taken it to a whole new level. And quite frankly, I think he's leaving Word Tracker a little bit in the dust currently. So join me on the 21st of June for Coffee Talk. If you're listening to this recording after that, of course, all the uh, sessions are recorded for playback and review and available in the uh, members area as well. Then on July the 12th, we've got Coffee Talk Live with Joe Chapius at the Web Video Zone, webvideozone.com. This will be a great session for video, and I know we touched upon it tonight, and I'm going to encourage every one of you here who are listening who have not explored the idea of adding video to your website, that you actually not only explore it, that you make a plan to get it done. And he's got a very cool little tool, and although we're going to look at the tool, he's also absolutely a wealth of information on adding video to your website to increase conversion rate and make more money from the existing traffic that you have. So that's uh, July the 12th with Joe Chapius from the Web Video Zone. Of course, you'll be all receiving an email just reminding you to attend. We also have another inbound link building workshop coming up in July on July the 17th. So those that are working through the backlinks now or getting ready to do that, you may want to consider joining me. Private members uh, get a bit of a discount, of course. Price on the site is $497 for four sessions where we dig into the backlinks session in great detail. Uh, if you've already taken the backlinks workshop or the first inbound link building workshop a month or so ago, uh, you can retake it if you want to audit it or if you want to just come in because you like to work in a group and you enjoyed it, you can take it again for 97 bucks. Currently, there's an early bird special on as well for others at 297 so you save 200 bucks if you go to the site. However, if you click on the link that Arneen gives you, uh, because you're private members, you will get another 100 bucks off that and you could take the entire four session, which will probably turn into five sessions as well, again, because I think five is probably the better number for 197 bucks. So you may want to take advantage of that. Okay, so let's uh, let's go right into a live Q&A now. Let's I see we're running a little bit 
uh, we probably got about 10 minutes here. So why don't we open this up to a Q&A and we can talk about outsourcing. Let's keep it on topic here. If you have any questions about hiring people to help move your business forward, uh, here's your chance. And I'd be happy to answer your questions for you. I noticed a number of you had posted questions above. Sorry, I, I didn't have a chance to deal with them as they went by, so you probably want to repost those again unless we've covered it off as we've gone through it here. Well, looks like we're pretty good, huh? Can you outsource an inbound link campaign? <laughs> I knew this question was coming. You know what? I have, I have three projects that I've posted in Elance for inbound linking, and not one time did I award them. I had lots of people bidding, but I didn't like what I was reading, and I wasn't trusting them. And they were over-promising, and I was expecting to, to get under-delivered to. So I would think you might be able to try, but I have not had any success with outsourcing in the Elance system. Now, when I had employees working for me in the early days, then I was fine. And we, I used to do most of them that way. Uh, but as far as outsourcing through the system, no. A couple of tips, though, for those that may want to try to have it outsourced. You want you, what you're looking for is somebody with a little bit of sales experience, because we're absolutely contacting people and we have to reply to them and work through them and work work with them. So if you can find somebody in Elance or locally that you want to outsource a little bit of your inbound linking, just make sure that they've got a little bit of a sales background or they understand that this is, you know, it's, it's very light sales. It's not difficult because you're sending an email, but uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, Linda's question is, all the steps in your insider report, uh, hiring authors that you can use for all of this that you're talking about, i.e. writers, technical problems, graphics, audio, video, the work orders and the information that are in there are for hiring people to develop content for your articles, develop content for your home and product pages, and then I've got a special little thing that I use press releases for to get content created for my websites, which I cover in the manual, and you'll hear all about it at the Hiring Authors Report. It's worth the price of admission alone for those of you that are creating articles, and uh, the way I use press releases, I think you're, you'll like that, so go have a look at that in the Hiring Authors Report. Sherry says, I was just going to pull it down and post the articles on my site. Is this okay? Um, post, pull it down. Pull what down, Sherry? Sorry, I don't, oh, pull your blog down? Just going to pull, pull it down and post your articles on my sites. Sure. I don't know why you would want to pull your blog down, though. Is there an issue with letting others know what your site is about? Nope. Uh, one thing you'll find with dealing with the people inside Elance, they're so focused on their tasks, they're not interested in what we're doing. They really just do the work. What are the steps, or could you give an example of a job that your content article writing, what do you do to give your, to your writer you might have covered it? It's all in the hiring author's report in great detail. Took me two, when you go through the report and you look at my little work order and what I say to the writer, that took two months to put together. Not two months full time, but I, I wrote it. I used it in Elance. There was some confusion coming back from the writers. I added clarity, worked on it some more, back and forth, and after a while there was no more questions. It was crystal clear, and I started getting back exactly what I wanted. Uh, so go in and have a look at that hiring office report. What is the time span or how long of a wait when you get the job to someone? Do you give it to them and then wait a couple of weeks or a couple of days or what? Uh, it depends on what the project is. If it's just an article or two, all of that I spec up front. And the Elance system gives you the ability to do that. If you have a question or if you have uh, some articles done or what, any type of project, you set the time frame as to when you want the bids to be done. So the bidding is going to be open for example seven days and once I've awarded the project I want the project to be started within one or two days or a week and then once it's started I want the project to be completed in X period of days. Linda's question, do you give them the keywords to use in your specs on one of the articles or give them a theme? I give them a very, if I'm ordering, for example, I just ordered 16 articles for one of my websites. I give them the primary keyword, the tier one, a basic description, uh, a little 
little bit more detail. All of it's in the, in the hiring authors report. I give them great detail on it for every single article. All 16 of those articles I thought through, and then I posted it in them, including the keywords I want to use, tier one, tier two, and the variations. And you'll see that in the work order when you di drill in. That hiring authors report is probably the most underutilized piece of training that I have, and it's probably the most powerful. It's unfortunate that it, d it does get overlooked because it's not actually in the manual. It's a separate report. So take the time and go through it. It's it's really, it's ex it's exactly what I do. It's not close. It's not kind of. It's exactly. I use the same words. When I posted that project for these 16 articles, it's a cut and paste. Here's what I want. Here's my work order. Here's it gives you all the instructions, how the headlines are going to be formatted, how long the, the first headline is, how many secondary headlines. Do I want bullets? I even tell them, I want bullets. If you're going to put bullets in my article, I want them to start after the third paragraph so they don't interfere with my Google ad or my banner ad that I insert into the first column. I tell them the keyword density rules, and I give it to them in absolutely crystal clear, plain language so they can say, oh, these density rules are an absolute piece of cake to follow. They read them, they understand them, and then they just write the piece. I also explain to them in there that I'm looking for unique, naturally written, well-researched, and interesting content that's not plagiarized, stolen. I'm looking for uniqueness that I'm going to be checking their spelling, checking their grammar, checking them for plagiarism, and all this stuff. It's all, all in the hiring author's report. Sherry's question, if I only have time to do either content on my site or blog. Would it not be better to post my site as there? Post it to my site as there, as the visitor could click on an ad or navigate around. Uh, let me ask you: Is your blog actually integrated into your site? Is it on the same domain name? Let me rephrase that: Is it on the same domain name? Then, to me, it's all one site. I wouldn't take the blog down at all. Where you're posting it, you know, I would I would keep definitely keep them up. No point. And you write a do a blog post and then link through to one of your product pages or two of your product pages or reference a couple of articles. E anytime you're developing content on your website, you should always be linking a couple of places elsewhere on your website anyways, so you can get that internal linking going. So if you happen to be writing an article about coffee cups and you've got a website or another page over there about coffee and you mention the word coffee in your coffee cups page, link to the coffee page. Chris's question is, in the hiring authors report you say go to the website writers to post your project. But I vaguely recall in the buzz or another coffee coffee talk that you go to professional writers because web writers are too focused on the old keyword density method. Which group do you post your projects to? Good question, Chris. Sometimes I lie to the writer in Elance. How's that for a statement? I lie to them because some of them have been writing for so-called webmasters and SEO or search engine optimization for so long, they have a tendency to stuff keywords in their content. And doing that is detrimental to our rankings in the search engines because we don't want stuffed keywords. We want naturally written, naturally written content. If they, can, if they would wanted to write an article about coffee cups, I would want the primary keyword phrase coffee cups in the headline, in the title tag, and then I would want the article to be about coffee cups. And all the research that would go with that would, would be obviously included within the writing. So they don't need to be worrying about saying the word coffee cups, coffee cups, coffee cups, coffee cups, coffee cups, coffee cups. And some of them have a tendency to do that. So what I do sometimes, if it's a very special article or I'm, I'm concerned about it, or when they send me back a couple and I can see that this is, you know, they're overusing the keyword phrase too many times, I'll tell them, you know, these are going to be posted in a print newsletter. Or I'm, these are for a, a little magazine that I have locally gets them right out of the internet thing and now guess what? Some little magical switch clicks in their head and they start writing normally again. And that's all we want to do is write normally. As if we were writing a grade school essay. We don't care about the internet and we don't want to be overusing keywords. And if you've got a picture of yourself writing for a newspaper or writing for a print newsletter or anything that's non-web related to get this idea of overusing keywords out of your head, you can get so far ahead. 
Linda says this feels so overwhelming. I guess that once you get used to all this, then you have you can laugh at yourself and say, "Am I correct?" Yes, you can. And keep in mind whether you're hiring a graphic designer or a writer or an illustrator or a technician to handle some of your technical problems. It's the same task. This is really simple. Because keep in mind, Linda, you're not doing the work. They are. And you're not creating a need. You, you, you go post a project when you need something. And you typically only need something one at a time. So if you need to have some articles written, go post a project. It's really simple. If you have a problem with uh, some images on your website or your, or your page is broken or, you, you know, or something's not working or you want to have a little script made, just go post a project. One piece at a time. Okay, this is really not complicated and it doesn't have to be overwhelming because just if you just keep it only what you need and just go in and uh, post a project. Remember, he said early on, don't struggle, outsource. Probably another one would be feeling overwhelmed, outsource. Let them do the work. Bill's, Bill's question, you said it's important for us to identify our roles in the process and, and then what can be outsourced. How would you define your role or the ideal daily functions we should leave for ourselves? To me, the most challenging, toughest part of the business, especially early on, and for those that are maybe looking in the forums or been into the forums, uh, you'll start to see there's some real good news happen about inbound link development. But it's, it's when you're getting started, it can seem like a bear. And there's a couple in there that a couple of people in there that have just experienced this, where they sent out emails and they didn't get any response the first time until they send the second email and it's like, oh wow, wow, well, this is great, this works, and this is the way it works. But you got to get your head around it. So to me, what should be focused on are the things that generate the revenue that are hard to outsource. Obviously, it's easy for us to find high quality writers because we've got Elance or we can go over to Kelly at .com, copy .com, or we can go to rentcoder.net uh, or getcoder.net or dozens of others freelance sites that are available now. So to me the writing end of it's quite simple. Now I still like to do the work order, I still manage the process and I still make sure that I'm giving good direction to the writer but I don't actually spend the hours and hours and hours writing. I get them to do that. And I give the writer access to my website so they actually post the content too so I don't have to. So that's pretty much taken care of. So that's very important in one of our roles. That's one of my primary roles. The other is inbound link development. Making sure I got the backlinks coming in. I've got one site right now, my work at home net guide site. I'm ranking number one for the term work at home online and a whole bunch of other keyword phrases. However, the keyword phrase work at home that I've ranked on page one of Google, usually around number six for three or four years, I checked my stats, I'm number 24 for the keyword phrase on Google uh, for the keyword phrase work at home. So guess what James needs to do? I need to go make sure I get a half a dozen good quality links back into the home page of that website so I can get my work at home keyword phrase off page three and back on to page one. Guess how many visitors I get from page three of Google for the keyword phrase work at home? Zero, none, nada, nothing. So to me, that's a revenue generating activity. All the other stuff that comes with the business, to me, although important and sometimes I got to get on it. I just had a problem with one of the sites where I've got an SSL certificate that I forgot to renew and it caused some problems and I had to deal with that. So I dealt with that or I'll give it to somebody else to deal with. But generally in that case I took care of it. But generally speaking if you guys stay focused on two things content but outsource as much of it as you can and inbound link development and outsource as much of that as you can too in the area of having the content created for those webmasters. Uh, you can barely lose at this thing. Where people get st stuck and stalled is 
when they start getting buried in hosting or trying to get their website online or images or audio or video or stuff that they're not professionals at and they feel like they need to learn a whole new discipline just because they want to get a 10 minute audio on their website. That's just not the way to go. So stay focused on the revenue generating activities which is content creation and inbound link development. Now content creation might be video, might be audio because those are both content but you can outsource that. You want to manage the process and you want to find somebody at Elance that can help you do it and probably do all the work for you, but you stay focused on content creation, more content, more inbound links, more content, more inbound links. Hosting problems don't make you money. Domain name registration doesn't make you money. Inbound links, content. Question from David. What would you not outsource? Uh, Inbound link development so far. I have not been able to really come up with a cost-effective way of doing that other than when I had the office here, so I've been doing a lot of that myself. Um, although it's worth, it's a, good, it's a good challenge for you guys to get some help in that area. How many of you have taken the inbound link building course? Let me ask you this question just so I know who we've got in the room here. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. Enrolled in the next one. No, no, no. Okay. Clayton has cool. One of the things that we get into, and in you know, no need to apologize. Just curious. One of the things that we get into in the inbound linking course is this whole area of turning the inbound link development into fun instead of a pain in the butt and turning it in into a getting it into a systematic flow so you can have a systematic approach to developing inbound links to your site so it becomes a simpler part of your business so it's not so cumbersome and not so clunky and you can actually get into a rhythm where you can because content is pretty easy and as you guys get good at this you'll find that adding content to your site is, is a relatively simple and easy process. You'll struggle with the inbound links only until you actually shift gears and do the task of developing inbound links. So it's just a matter of priorities and usually when people are getting started they're so wrapped up in the technical end of the business of learning how to get the site online and all that stuff and getting the content done that the, the backlinks have a tendency to get pushed to the side. That needs to kind of be really be careful with that because you want to be focused in on getting uh, that done. Okay, guys, I think uh, we're going to call it an evening. I'd like to just say uh, enjoyed the session tonight. It's been uh, one of these interesting uh, topics that I really like to talk about because it's been near and dear to my heart. So be sure to, thank you for that, Bill. Be sure to check out the events calendar. There's a number of things coming up at the Affiliate Marketers Bootcamp website. Stay in touch. We'll see those who are taking the Affiliate Marketers Bootcamp Session number four begins on Wednesday night where we're going to get into the content management systems and talk all about picking a content management system that's right for your business. We're going to get into some good detail on that. I look forward to it. So uh, we'll see everybody soon. So there's a there's, – is there a cl Monday class at all? Uh, not this Monday. No, nope. Mondays is the first Monday of every month where we get into a live Q&A. And you can always check the events calendar because sometimes if it's a holiday, it might get bumped to the Tuesday or the following Monday. But typically it's the first Monday of each month. So just head over to the Affiliate Marketers Bootcamp, check the Bootcamp site and the events calendar, and you'll be fine. So thanks for all your comments and feedback there. And uh, there's another edition of Coffee Talk. To learn more about James Martell, the School of Internet Marketing, and how you or someone on your staff can quickly and easily learn how to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand, visit theschoolofinternetmarketing.com. That's www.theschoolofinternetmarketing.com.